Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's fourth video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10, 14 days. For today's fourth video, day 10 will take us to the 18th of March, and we'll be able to set up beyond that. We're at Senate GFS and ECM Ensembles, maybe on a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into the beginning of April. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first. The video sales at 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've also released the weekend forecast and the ECM 42 day for the UK and Ireland. Check out the those free bits if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content to show to everyone for dear Matt for Gaz Weather Viz. Thank you so much, everyone. Love it. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. It's a really nice day here in the tower. So I'm going to get this done and then I go out into the garden for an hour, I think. So uh, let's crack on. We're going to begin with the strat. So check this out. It's coming from the JMA. Current temperatures and past temperatures this season at 10 HPA in the strat here over North Palm. And you can see from the black line lifting up that the uh, sudden stratospheric warming that began over Russia and Siberia is now moving into uh, the North Pole itself at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. I reckon that's going to lift up to about there, maybe, when it updates tomorrow. So that could look quite exciting and quite dramatic for us all weather geeks. Go low, low down to 30 HPA. Warming is beginning to appear there as well, although still slightly below average. It'll take a bit longer to lift the temperature up at 30 HPA, but we should get there next week. So this is how things are currently looking in terms of the temperature temperature at 10 HPA over the Arctic of the North Pole. There's the warming which moved out of Russia into the pole, displacing the Chateau Polar Vortex um, uh, uh, down to Canada, North Atlantic and into uh, Western Europe as well. So we're going to see a reversal of zonal winds probably in a couple of days' time. I would have thought that warming then maintained over the uh, polar region in the strategy. And another one, dramatic warming appearing there around the middle of March. Check that one out. That's even stronger probably than uh, the current warming actually over northern Russia, and again, starting to uh, move in towards the uh, North Pole itself also. Well, that one starts to uh, ease down after a couple of days, but the damage has been done. We get a split of the transfer polar vortex at its roots, and uh, that's how we end up on the 24th of March. By then, it looks like the stratospheric polar vortex, the SPV, is pretty much done for. Um, this is how uh, weather is cooled. It's all in terms of GFS ensembles. So, zone winds are weakening. We're currently there. Still positive with the zone wind, but by the beginning of next week, we should see the zone wind going into reverse, dropping out at really quite an impressively uh, low level, then trying to rebound, and then we get that second warming that could actually. <laughs> <coughs> So, sorry, we can actually uh, reverse the zone of wind even stronger um, as we go in towards the uh, middle of March there. So, all in all, it looks like the SPV is pretty much done for after this uh, sudden stratospheric warming event and the second secondary warming um, has done uh, their work. It looks like the SPV will be pretty much done for. We'll keep you updated. Okay, <laughs> later on, a map from Earth, nolschool.net. Show we've got low pressure cut off to the west of uh, Portugal, Spain, and the Bay of Biscay. And we're drawing up wind from a very mild, if not quite warm, southerly southeast direction. But by the beginning of next week, we'll shift that around to a northeasterly. And uh, so temperatures are going to take a tumble. Check out weekend forecast if you want to know more about that. Well, uh, this is how the temperature is currently uh, looking. So uh, we're sitting at 6.9, which is 1.3 degrees above the 61 to 1990 average. And that's provisional to uh, yesterday to the 7th of March. That's going to go up into the sevens, and then it'll start to drop, I think, uh, through the course of next week back into the sixes. Let's do a little bit of CT Saturday. So uh, this is the Central England temperature page from Hadley. All CT month months go back to 1659, the oldest and most reliable temperature record anywhere on Earth. Well, let's deal with uh, 2025 so far. Um, we see January coming at 3.4, quite a chilly month, and uh, March uh, to February, I should say, at 5.3. March's number will be placed just there. 
So I've had some quite mild marches uh, recently, 8.2 in uh, 2024, 7.1 in 2023, 8 degrees in uh, 2022, and uh, 7.3 in 2021. But a sub-7 CT march, we've got to go back to 2020, came in at 6.8. And for a sub-6 CT march, uh, so a cold march, basically, we've got to go back to 2018. But beast from the east, beastly east. Easty, easty, beastly, beastly, easty. Uh, at 5.1 there. Richard's been doing a little bit of research. Hello to my good friend Ricardo. Hello to. <laughs> so sorry, Rich. Hello to uh, Richard Schwab. Been doing a little bit of research. So, I've got a bit of information here. Apparently. The uh, sectoring temperature has come in below 6 degrees, so a cold CT uh, at uh, below 6 degrees for March 27 times since uh, since 1950. It happened six times, though, in the 1970, but only five times in the 2000s. Um, now, that works out at uh, twice, happened twice in the 2000s, but three times in the 2000s. And 10. So let's see if we can pick those out. So there's 2,000 we're looking for. So we've got 2,001. There we go. 5.2. And we've got 2,006. 5.1. Back in uh, the 2,000s. But then we go through to 2010s. And uh, it happened three times. So that would be 2.8 in the phenomenally, ferociously cold uh, March of 2013. Um, when, of course, we were frozen snow cover. Particularly the second half of the month. Usually about March 2013. Is that the coldest weather happened later on in the month rather than early in the month? Because March is normally like a warming, you know, it's normally like a warming month. So um, that was uh, quite odd how that happened. But anyway, that's the coldest March since 1883. Goodness gracious me. And then, of course, we've got 2016 just there at 5.9. And we've got 2018 at 5.1. We haven't had a sub zero C. Uh, so we haven't want to talk about sub zero. Be somebody get a sub zero CT March. <laughs> no, we haven't had a sub six CT marks so far this decade in the 2020. So we are due for one. Um, you know, maybe 2025 could be the one. We are in some cooler weather uh, next week, so it'll be interesting to see uh, where the uh, where the CT comes out for March. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Thank you so much, Richard Traw, for uh, that info. Uh, 1996, that was a pretty cold march, uh, 4.5 uh, just there, but most of the marches in the 1990s were actually uh, very mild. We may be seeing a slight cooling trend, actually, for March, certainly in the last decade. Um, the warmest march on record, I think it's 1957, with a CT of 9.2. I think that's the only time that March has come out with a, a CT in the 90s, despite all of the uh, recent warmings. Could be wrong on that. And then, of course, we go back to the 18... 80s. Let's uh, see if we can uh, pick it out. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So 18. Uh, there we go, 1883, 1.9. So, uh, for the century in temperature, March 2013 was the coldest, I think, since 1883. But there was a very cold March in the 1960s, actually, just for the dagger. Um, <laughs> 1962 at uh, 2.8 there. Maybe that's a bit of a teaser for what was to come uh, later on, well, at the end of the year and into the following year. 1962 was a very cold year, uh, generally, with an overall year, yearly CT um, of 8.6 there. Uh, right, so thank you uh, so much, Richard, for the data. Thank you so much, Ricardo. I can't roll my arm. Thank you so much to uh, Richard Short for the data there. And uh, I hope you enjoy CT Saturday, everyone. We'll do it again, probably uh, in early April. Let's move on, uh, shall we? And we'll have a look at the GFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles will be next couple of weeks. We're at Cheltenham today. A few of you have uh, asked me uh, to uh, have a look at various places. We've got uh, Darwin, Bournemouth, 
Bolton. So, uh, and a few more places as well, uh, as well as those. So, um, we will be looking at those over the coming days in the video. It's been sent to 14 days. Of course, we've got the Cheltenham Festival uh, next week. It looks like it's going to be a pretty chilly uh, Cheltenham Festival, I have to say. Certainly be an uh, earlier part of it anyway. Well, these are GFS up red temperature and precipitation ensemble for Cheltenham. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Cheltenham. And we see that we're above average with the upper air temperature at the moment. But a tumble is on the way through the early part of next week. It's going to become colder. Although the GFS is shortening, or the GEFS is shortening that uh, cold spell. So a bit of a wobble uh, going on in the GFS ensemble. So luckily, it's March and not January. Or <laughs> I'll be having lots of people. Um, you know, getting cross with me. Uh, but anyway, it does look as though the GFS is wobbling a little bit on the longevity of the uh, colder period uh, next week, trying to lift uh, the upper attention back up to average. I mean, hovering close to the long term 30 year average in the extended. You'll notice from a thick green line that that is taking off and becoming uh, a warm outlier later on. Precipitation wise, uh, looks more intense. So, what with uh, gain, with the shortening of the cold snap, with uh, loss in terms of an increase in uh, precipitation spikes there. So, reasonably dry for the next few days, but next week and beyond it, looking more unsettled, especially around the middle part of March, where there could be some quite uh, wet weather coming through. Have a quick look at the ECM ensemble, though. Where's that? There it is. <laughs> uh, go to bear, go to bear. And then I uh, go to there, ba -ba -ba -ba, and back to there. Um, the East Shelters are much more bullish about uh, the longevity of the cold spell compared to the GFS. So, uh, you know, a lot longer, about a week of uh, colder than average conditions there with the ECM ensembles after a mild star. Again, that's for Cheltenham. Less in the way of precipitation spikes. So, interesting what's happening there. And uh, obviously, we'll keep you updated about that. Uh, well, uh, on tomorrow's live stream, when we do a 10 14 day live stream, we'll have a look at the uh, ensemble data once again. Temperature anomaly! So, next five days are coming out above average. Six to ten day temperature anomaly is close to a little bit below average, but not as cold as it has been over recent days. But 10 to 14 day temperature anomaly is near normal to slightly above average. Precipitation anomalies for the next seven days are uh, largely drier than average. 10 to 16 day is uh, close to normal. Right, let's start going through the chart data. We saw let's UK make Euro run. It's looking for uh, midnight on Tuesday. High pressure blocking around Greenland Iceland. Uh, winds coming in from cold north northeast east Rex Roads. Normally, north are maintained throughout next week. Even to Friday, we keep the north east wind going. So, a longer cold, that probably cold spell compared to uh, the GFS. By next Saturday, by next weekend, possibly signs something slightly less cold coming in around the top from off the Atlantic. I can't again bring in those cold north to northeast winds through the middle part of next week. <coughs> Oh, sorry, everyone. And that carries on then through to the end of next week, too. And uh, we get to the end of the icon, right? It gets us midday next uh, Saturday. Looks like we're about to drop another drop across the country and possibly redo the northerly. So icon looks pretty prolonged for the cold snap as well. And then we've got the KMA. We're blocking around Iceland to Greenland through the middle part of next week, maintaining those cold north or northeast winds throughout the week and actually maintaining the northerly into uh, next weekend. Does turn milder around day 10 and beyond it, so into the third week of March, turning mild wet wind. It's actually looking quite stormy potentially for the north by the 20th of March. GFS looks like miss. So again, we've got the winds coming in from the northeast through um, maybe to the end of next week anyway, but uh, less of the northeast. You're not strong with that east northeast compared to the other bottle output, so therefore we don't drive in those colder upper air temperatures quite as much. And by days 8, 9, 10, start to shift wind around to a southerly uh, there, so becoming a lot milder then. But also uh, a little bit unsettled before high pressure returns um, and becomes a Scandinavian high, bring the wind in from a not particularly cold EC rate. So that's how we end up with GFS midnight. Remember GFS 6 there. By comparison, again, we've got those cold northeast winds through the middle part of next week. By the end of next week, we're Already starting to shift the wind around to more of a southeasterly bow and dragging up some less cold upper air temperatures. And then uh, up to uh, day 10, when high pressure gradually 
slipping away, allowing a lot of pressure coming in from off the Antarctic, bringing some wet and uh, windy weather in with it. In the extended, turning up much milder, southwesterly winds, when high pressure builds up from the south there, so that could be quite warm, actually, down in the south. That might lead potentially to a low 20 Celsius, would you believe? Well, if you're enjoying the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to everyone for doing that. Why don't you comment on the same? What do you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc, 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 And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gals. Well, get to subscribe to this part around 30 subscribers to get to uh, 19.6k. So, if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. We're grinding to 20k. Hopefully, we'll get to 20k in the summer. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, GM. Again, winds near from the northeast on Tuesday. Looking quite calm and wintry through the middle part of next week. Keeping it cold to the end next week. Then less cold next weekend. This high pressure slips southwards. Still chilly by night, I would have thought, but uh, not too bad in the last sunshine by day. Uh, by day, we're back into westerlies uh, by the 18th of March, by the very end of the gem. And then the east GM rounds it all off the chart days with winds coming in from the east and from the northeast on Tuesday. Looking cold and quite wintering through most of uh, next week. That's Friday, you see. But we're still in those northeasterly winds there with the east end. Remember, at this point, the GFS is backing the wind around to the southeast. So the GFS looks a bit isolated with its wobble, I have to say. But we'll see. You never rule anything out <laughs> when it comes to cold weather. But uh, the east end is keeping it cold into uh, next weekend. Just a little bit less cold, probably, by next Sunday. That's the 16th of March. And then we have well, that's day 10, turning wet and windy and a lot milder. It winds in the Atlantic, a little north there by the 19th of March um, and that's how we end up hyper coming back northwards again by the 23rd. This is a precipitation forecast based on the East End run from Tometra.com. Lots of dry weather to come, really, over the next few days. Becoming colder, though, next week with wintry showers, particularly in the north and in the east. Cold rain showers down the south. <laughs> and then we're back into uh, Mayodel. I could just by day 10 with rain in the north. These are the options on the table in the East End ensembles today. Four day term from the Icelandic Met Office. It gets us to the 18th of March. 27 members of the East Gem Ensembles. We have a ridge out to the west. I start to re establish an Atlantic flow by then. And we've got 24 with high pressure towards Scandinavia, low pressure out in the Atlantic. Both the options are probably turning milder from a different uh, route, route, route. <laughs> uh, and then two inside, these are the options that we've got. Gets us 23rd of March. 29 members of the East Gem Ensembles with a mid Atlantic ridge. Tropo Scandinavia winds are coming in from a chilly northwesterly direction, potentially with that. And we've got 22 of high pressure over and to the east, going to be bringing the wind in from a not particularly cold easterly direction. And then the CFS finally, these are 500 millibar high tons break down to the first week period will be taking us from the 8th to 14th of March. High pressure blocking around green and ice and low pressure down towards Spain. And winds coming in from a uh, pretty cold northeasterly direction. Week 2 will be the 15th to the 21st of March with high pressure to the north, low pressure south, wind perhaps a bit more southeasterly, so uh, becoming milder there. And then week three will be, let's do that again, the 22nd to the 8th of March, low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, winds like going back into a westerly Atlantic uh, direction. Finally, week four rounds it all off. It's 29th of March to 4th of April, high pressure down to Spain, ridging northwards, low pressure probably out in the Atlantic, and that should be a pretty mild end to March. Not much sign of uh, any northern blocking there after the stratospheric one, so maybe this will be an SSW, but doesn't have a tropospheric response. It'll be interesting to see how things are looking by the end of March into the start of April. We'll see. Anyway, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc., etc. And don't forget to tell your friends about it as well. If you haven't subscribed to you, thanks so much everyone for doing that. Show tomorrow. We're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We have our first summer update. So uh, the countdown to summer. 2025 begins at Gals Webby tomorrow at 10 a.m. And then we're live at 6. When you're 10 to 14, I shall see you uh, then. For this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.